Trending is brought to you by the Bahamas Adventist Book and Nutrition Center, located on Tony William Starling Highway. Hey guys, welcome to Young and Trending here on Word SPC 88.3 FM, where we aim to be bold, be true, and be heard. I'm Tyler. And I'm Pastor Nasa. And today we have a very interesting show for you guys. We've called it The Courage to Care. Mm. The Courage to Care. Mm, mm. You know, being vulnerable through life, being vulnerable in today's society. Um, so I saw this post online, um, and there were several different other like TikToks and things that I had seen that sparked a conversation between um, me and some other persons about how we kind of having a breakdown of community almost and interpersonal relationships right now in society. Okay. It's been like gradually happening. Oh, However, yeah. like we've seen people are becoming very inherently selfish. And that is true. As we go through this, a lot of times we're going to be being trying to straddle both sides of it because there's some very valid points to be made. I think so, yeah, sides. for sure, for sure. I think you can see it. However, I think a lot of things right now that happen in society can go back to people feeling like they don't have people to depend on mm -hmm. or just that inherently selfishness. Like the world is a cold place. Like, you know, it's an evil world we live in. Mm. Um, and people not feeling like they have that community and that support around them yeah so the post had said stop saying people don't owe each other anything we owe each other community we owe each other love we owe each other safety we owe each other support individualism is destroying us you know there's that phrase no man is an island mm. what do you think about that um that and that reminded me of the other post i was connected to it that said people are afraid to care mm -hmm. afraid to get hurt but getting hurt is a part of caring be brave Life without caring is death. I, I I believe that fear does keep us paralyzed. It mm -hmm. keeps us captive. It keeps us uh, uh, demotivated to go beyond and to extend ourselves. When sometimes, really and truly, uh, we need to extend ourselves in certain situations mm -hmm. so that we can experience um, what is what we're missing. But that vulnerability, though. No one likes to be vulnerable. I don't want to show you <laughs> my weak spots, my weak areas, yeah, because, no. you know, you could get at me. People could tease me, maybe. I, you could, you know, make me feel less, uh, you know, confident in myself. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like that, that there's that risk that I'm going to lose something if I do give this, if I do open up. And that's, that's something I believe. The fear of that, is, is, is blocking many of our blessings, I would say, or many opportunities from us, mm -hmm. I would say. I think that <laughs> that is so ironic because in order to cultivate deep and meaningful relationships or any just some semblance of trust, you have to be able to be vulnerable to a certain extent, depending on the relationship that you're trying to cultivate. You have to be willing to open up a part of yourself and to take that risk because it is it is a risk it is Ain't a nobody risk. telling you it's not uh, we're not here saying oh if you open up you'll never get hurt yeah you know see, that's the kind of stuff nobody right will ever use that against you no see <laughs> no but that's a risk because it in in the instances where it turns out right that's what i should say it reaps such great rewards let me let me let me tell you let me let me let me, let me get personal again and tell another story so <laughs> the, the the risk of being vulnerable you, 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 when you've experienced pain, it makes you even more fearful mm -hmm. to extend yourself. Because th let's be real, this is a complex world we're living in. Mm -hmm. You know, everything isn't always black and white, no. like despite how people try to make it seem, right? So, for instance, I remember <laughs> being the young little boy who was so into this other young girl. High school time, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to be there. Uh, Valentine, I was buying the little rose and the <laughs> mug and a little teddy bear in the mug, you know, because they to sell it together. You know, I, I get in the Valentine. She ain't my Valentine. I just get in the fall. You know, I want to know. Oh, I wow. care what for a her. I, I was there when she was <laughs> ready to cry and she would tell me all the stories of what was going on. And I was caring. I would show up for her only for her to 
choose another guy to be your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> but I was given, I was being, I was extending myself. And here it was, I felt hurt mm -hmm. because I didn't get what I thought I would have gotten for opening up and sharing and exposing myself. And that left a mark inside of me where I, 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 I started off a challenge with sharing that much of myself, you know, and it followed me into my adult life. Like mm -hmm. that, that's the reality. Like these things, I know it's a funny story, right? <laughs> but these things, they may start off small, but they follow us into the rest of our life mm -hmm. until they're real, maybe life and death situations or situations that could really affect our family, our career, our relationships, even our spirituality. Mm -hmm. And we're still fearful of that thing of, of feeling hurt. And we don't go the direction that would open up all of those avenues for us. What's scary though is, because you're going to be real, what's scary is sometimes those things that cause you to be fearful are hesitant to open up are things that like you had no control over. Yeah. Which like further solidify like you know what I need to do everything in my power yeah. to yep. safeguard myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, you told the story it was funny, mine ain't funny. Um <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was younger my dad died right mm. and him and my mom were like completely in love like she would say oh, like that was Mr. Perfect like that was her soulmate and he died mm. he did the man died like he died and there wasn't anything we could do um, he left as a young widow with two little girls five and one mm -hmm. um, I, I think she was 28 around there somewhere um, but he left a very young widow two young kids unpredictable and so she just i watched how that upheaved her life i was able to see the effects that it had on my life not just him dying but also how it changed my mom and growing up of course i always want to be i want to get married and have kids but there was that hesitancy there of like um i don't want to do all that and then he just up and die and that's a fan it's mm. like one, it's rational. Because right. some people have very irrational fears. Right. They're not going to lie. To say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a very rational fear. Everybody fears death. However, I watched that real up close in real time, becoming a young widow with two little kids. That's a lot. Even in the best possible case scenario of having supportive family and friends around, having that support system, still seeing the effects of that mm -hmm. and how that ravished my mom. Mm -hmm. So it was a very rational fear. And then... I'm like, I can't do anything to stop that. Mm. So how about I just don't? <laughs> don't, yeah, don't even. How about I just don't? Give it opportunity. Right. And so that's something that like ha would have me, would have had me. I say would have because, yay, I'm kind of over that now. <laughs> <laughs> um, That would have had me been very hesitant to open myself up even in that way to that extent mm -hmm. to the possibility of something progressing towards a marriage in which I like fully put all my feelings on the table and give someone mm -hmm. the capacity mm. not just to hurt me by being a bad person because okay whatever like people are like that but to just up and die you yeah. know you hear all the time the wages of sin are death and you're like you know we don't know the day nor the hour and all these different things <laughs> so it's like I'm already preparing myself for the inevitable and that was something that I had to come to terms with it later on because I didn't realize that was my fear, but it, it really was. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. that was something that really stopped me from opening up, not saying I should have opened up earlier, mm -hmm. but that's where a lot of my hesitancy came with. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's, came from. that's so real. And, and, and why I saying that it's real? Because sometimes you have people use the acronym for fear, F E A R, and they say false, uh, False information. <laughs> oh gosh, false evidence appearing real. I try to find uh. the e again. Right? The e. <laughs> false evidence appearing real. But then there are many real evidences, real evidences that have occurred in our lives that yes. that 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 makes you really fearful because it happened before. You mm -hmm. you, you got burned. You, you you felt the pain. And so it's like it's not just an imaginative thought, right? And so. Um, that's why, even back to, you know, you're talking about the courage to care, uh, the post was talking about um, stop saying we don't owe each other anything. I believe that is that's coming from a place where people felt hurt legitimately 
mm-hmm. in some type of relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a growing up or a romantic relationship. Mm-hmm. And so now from that place, they fear extending to others mm-hmm. because they know what it's like to not receive. Right. And so that's why we don't owe each other co- or say, you miss out on community when you don't care enough to extend yourself to community. Mm-hmm. Some of the loneliest people in the world are people who keep to themselves. Mm. I know that sounds some kind of way, but it's true. Like <laughs> a part of the reason they're lonely is because they intentionally keep to themselves. Mm-hmm. They they don't extend themselves to try. You know the Bible says, "He who must have friends must show themselves friendly." Mm-hmm. Right? You 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 can have friends if you appear friendly. Or even you have friends. But it's just very surface level. Like, you don't want to open well, yourself deeper. See, nah, see, now nah, we're getting into the weeds of it now. That's it. Like you don't <laughs> want to open yourself deeper to that. We're getting into the weeds now. Because then, that's true. You have a lot of that. But Pete, you tell, you're telling the story about um, off air, uh, the friend who <laughs> told that a friend that they wouldn't pick them up to drop them somewhere yes. unless that friend gave them money up front. So, okay. Get- <laughs> so, that's the thing with friends, right? Right now on social media, not even right now, but growing but up friends? and like, you know, in the song, ooh, okay, the song that I heard on social media one time. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, cut, cut it, cut it, cut it, right? <laughs> like, everybody's getting cut off. Like, if you mess right. up, I'm cutting you off. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, just one and done, because I don't have time for this. I don't have to put up with this and all that stuff, which, again, is very valid. We are now in a place, uh, in a time in society where... We don't have to stay and put up with whatever. We seem to feel like there's all these options. We could find mm-hmm. more friends. We could find more money. We could right. find another man. We could find another woman. Like, you know, we could go and build our own family. We don't have to stay where because blood isn't always family. Like, right, we have right. a lot more that individualism options. Right. Very individualistic mindset, which, mm-hmm. again, at some times is very valid. However, that has broken down i think the specialness of community mm-hmm. and that that's rolled over into just how we interact with one another because yeah. everything now is almost like transactional yes like what you could do for me if i do this what, what you could do you done for me and if i do this let me think of what you could do right like right. you know like right oh i do this and we come back and look at Oh, I remember last time I, I right. Did. Now you started to bring up. You started to bring up the receipts. Like, man, man, you know, last time I was yeah. the one. You know, I, I I get McDonald's for you that time. You know, so it's like, hey, you gonna get me now? And to a certain extent, like that's fine. Like the thing right. with the gas money, the girl just like you know, her friend was like, well, I'm not gonna take you to the airport if you don't give me gas money. And on a surface. Most people would be like, that's fair, because you going out of your way to drive mm-hmm. her. Probably a However, away. when you really get into it and you think of this more like a mindset that branches off into different things, who not can you call to drop you to the airport if not your friend? Mm. Like, you know, a, a part of friendships, relationships, going deep and having that connection, I think a part of the beauty of that is being willing to, on some level, um, inconvenience yourself for people that you love. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not not to your own detriment, but being willing to go out of your way to do something for people that you love, either because you know they appreciate it, they need it, mm-hmm. they like it. Like, you know, we see that in like romantic relationships all the time. Like, okay, I'm going to go out of my way a couple of minutes to go to the store and buy flowers. Or I'm going to go out of my way to go and get these cookies that he likes. Or I'm going to go out of my way and I'm going to cook this meal that they like. Yeah. Like, you know? And not inconvenience in a way that you are putting yourself at such a disadvantage. However, you're doing something you wouldn't necessarily normally do, but it's because you love that person and you value the yeah. relationship that you have with them. Mm-hmm. So, of course, on surface, like, gas money don't sound like a big deal. Shoots, I just ask my friends for gas money sometimes. <laughs> but right now, at the point in our friendships, that's kind of like a given if the place too far or if it's becoming too often. But it doesn't matter. Like, that's our friendship. And even then, I would say, it's how you say it. It's how you say <laughs> you can, you, it's a, it. It's a way you can say it that don't have to come off so transactional. You like, you know, I, I, there have been times too where have friends call me up and I, and I was like, but I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to no gas in the car right now. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, unless you really want to go, that, that's something we have to solve. And then and it's like, fine. cool. It's like, cool. Yeah, I got you. Yep. Versus me, they call me and they ask me if I need a ride to the airport or something. But that could be, uh, that could be X amount of dollars, man. <laughs> Like what? <laughs> like it just sounds so different to come walk. Because I'm like, what's like? I calling you? I might as well call an Uber. You might as well, right? And so I think I think 
this individualistic mindset, because of people feeling hurt, we, we begin to blockade ourselves in these little uh, fortresses. And then we insulate ourselves from the f getting hurt. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, we begin to block off those real connections. And so friendships really become shallow because it's really more about what you do for me. Mm -hmm. What I get, like you, you hear the little stories. <laughs> you hear, you'll hear it jokingly say that you know you'll have some, some girls, and they may be seeing us, you know, deemed attractive, mm -hmm. but they would intentionally hang around a group of other girls who may not be deemed as attractive, as a way to you know what, make themselves feel make better? themselves feel mm -hmm. better and proper. And it's like. But they all would call themselves friends if you talk mm -hmm. to them. Oh, that's my friend. That's my friend. Mm -hmm. When in her mind, that's a transactional arrangement. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't go deeper. You know? And so we when we think just on the transactional level only, we cut ourselves off from the community. We cut ourselves off from real love. Like real love. For real love to exist, you have to be vulnerable. You have to you have to open up yourself. You know what it's get to me? Like I talk to a lot of young people and, you know, I, I, today is a big thing talking about relationships and you know even marriage and all that type of stuff and it's like but many people struggling to find meaningful relationships and when it comes down to it it's because they keep holding back mm -hmm. like they, they're in a relationship they say oh that's my boyfriend or that's my girlfriend sometimes that's my husband or my wife but I can't let them see this part of me I can't give this part to them I can't share this part of myself with mm -hmm. them because I don't want I don't think they can handle it or whatever the case may be and that insulates them from going deeper in the relationship. Um, in addition to that, also something that's reinforced, I think, with social media is the notion not just like I can't give this to them, but also they don't deserve it. Oh, see, that's that's where that's where it grows into at so a certain point. It's mm -hmm. like, you don't deserve all my time. Mm. Like, you don't deserve all my energy. Mm -hmm. And of course, I subscribe to the belief that you do have to save something for yourself in terms of, like, making sure you are taking care of yourself to a certain extent. However, again, in order to have deep, meaningful relationships, yes. that requires you to put in time, effort. That requires reconciliation, mm -hmm. which is an inherently selfless yes. thing to See. do. That requires forgiveness. That requires... Doing things that are uncomfortable in certain certain times, and because, and this is this is a neutral statement because now with the rise of, you know, concepts like boundaries, which we know have been so helpful to so many people in so many different ways, mm -hmm. boundaries, mental health issues, just the polarization of social media, we have just people who now just don't feel like anybody deserves access to them. protecting my peace and protecting my energy. Like, mm. you know, I don't have to put up with this. I say it like this and that's it. Get out the program or not. And we all have autonomy to do that. We all have, I think, the right to be able to say, hey, I don't like this. I don't want to be treated yeah. like this. Absolutely. But there are certain instances where that drive, I think, hinders our ability to continue to foster relationships. Oh, for sure. I think... Because again, you know, real love, you know, there's even a Bible verse to talk about perfect love drives out fear. Like to have that real connection, you have to be able to open up yourself for someone to come in, for them to pour back into you. And I think, and you could you do, you do it at different levels. So your friend levels, your family levels, you have, you know, the romantic partner mm -hmm. leveled. But then at the same time, it's like you 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 have to make the decision to open up. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you you will stay right where you are, which is very surface, very transactional, very lonely. I would mm -hmm. say, you have to have the courage to care means you have to have the courage to open yourself, to make yourself uh, uh, receptive for somebody else to pour into you. And I think that's why we are losing this village mentality. Uh, people are growing up very isolated. You know, they're very, uh, they grow up and they only have their own thoughts to bounce off of mm, because they don't right. get, they don't have those persons in their life who can pour into them. Mm -hmm. We don't have, we don't have real neighbors no more. 
Yeah. You know, I neighbor, don't you, know if the neighbors you used to know the, my life, you used to know the neighbors by <laughs> name. Used to know the neighbors. They used to know your kids. They used to know your kids. Doing. When you celebrating, they celebrating yes, too. Yes. Yes. Now we 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 don't know who live next door. I would say my grandparents had fantastic neighbors and. Because of their relationship with them, that's why we have a relationship with them. <laughs> that's hey, a, hey, that's, that's what's about up. it. Outside that's real? of that, I don't know, and I think that's kind of sad. We we losing. That's kind of sad. We're losing. We are. We <laughs> are. I think the trade off for privacy See, yeah. is kind of. Yeah, getting in the way. Valid, again. Okay, that's why right. like, these conversations can that's go like, on for so long. And they're nuanced. That's yeah, right. they have so much nuance. Now, you don't else? want your name all across the neighborhood either. No, you, <laughs> you don't want, want everyone you in your don't business want across. or need <laughs> everybody in your business. You don't need nobody watching you coming and going all the time, getting right. ready to go tell your mommy who was there. What, mm. Like, all these different stuff. You don't need that. But what I, would, what I was going to say, too, is sadly, one of the things that also hinders people in being vulnerable in like loving without abandon and excuse me all that stuff is the like what is it called mm. not feedback the fallout fallout mm-hmm. okay. that they get when they do now let's say a relationship go into it love them with all their heart and you know they decided to be vulnerable probably again or for the first time, despite what they may have seen others gone through, and it doesn't work out, and people turn around and call them stupid. Well, why you give them all your energy? You ain't supposed to even get that involved, like whatever the case may be. Like, you know, then you don't have, once again, that support to fall back on because, again, in a nuanced way, you know, you need to stand in your own actions. Mm, and mm-hmm. So, where now, again, is that community aspect say, like, hey, like this person is struggling. Like, you know, this person needs advice. And again, the breakdown of the community now affects us in so many ways. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And so I think that's why it's important for us to have some practical guidelines um, that help with these type of situations because mm-hmm. it is it is complex. You're not trying to oversimplify it. Uh, there are real ramifications to opening yourself up and being vulnerable. Yes. But when you have the courage to care, then you could benefit so greatly um like for instance if we consider creating healthy boundaries and that's usually a a, a trial and error type of thing Mm -hmm. to learn how what's what's a healthy boundary for a friend family member a Mm -hmm. neighbor you know a a romantic interest you know uh what's the boundary that i need to establish that you know i can have a meaningful connection but it's still not overextending because everyone ain't gonna be a best friend yeah, no. Everyone won't be a spouse that close, right? So right. you have to be able to have a healthy boundary. Um, that's why in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Mm-hmm. So you do need to guard your heart. You can't just let anybody in. You can't just, you know, tell all your secrets to everybody. You know, you do need to have. Um, then uh, you need to also learn to say no. <laughs> The power of no. The power of no. Somebody come and ask you something. I'm so good at saying no. That's all right. I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) But true, true. you need. We need to be able to tell people no. Don't make nobody let y'all feel. Don't let anybody make y'all feel bad for saying no. Something that you do not want to do. That's your power. Take control of your power. Your power to say no. Um, (laughs) Then also, I would say that. Going in a spiritual direction, asking God for the strength to discern. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's a real thing. Like asking God, help me to make better choices with people. Mm -hmm. Like, like I, I talked about the fair. I talked about on opening up. That was something I had to go to God about to say, Lord, help me to have a healthy, a healthy understanding of my own feelings, my own emotions, and to be able to communicate better. Mm So that that would help me going forward. I was just going to say, like, even praying for discernment. I have had such personal experiences with that. One time, um, one instance was I had friends in college Mm -hmm. and still like them. We're still cool to this day. Mm -hmm. But I didn't quite like the vibe. And I knew, like, Mm. I just knew that was not. And I prayed for God to bring people into my life Mm. um, Mm -hmm. who were kind of different. And he did. And 
those relationships still transcend like to today very strong very lasting considering the amount of time that i was there um and even like in relationships praying for discernment and how to connect with the other person i think I think if more people did that, they'd have better relationships. But no, I, I praying the, for the discernment and how to connect, mm-hmm. how to speak, how to open up, what way should I say this, like so that we could reach this new understanding of each other, get deeper, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Like God cares, you know. Yes, He does. He does. He cares, and He'll show you if you ask. That's why He says, "Come to Me, all who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest." Um, 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 and then. Another thing on on top of what you just said that brought to mind um, balancing between having compassion and empathy versus taking on too much. Mm. You do have some people who they will just pour all onto you nonstop. Mm-hmm. They could be making requests on you. Non- mm-hmm. You could do this for me. You could do that. You could do that. And 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 they just pouring, 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 and you just pouring, giving, 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 and then you just deplete it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So there's there's a level of, of, of intelligence we need to balance that mm-hmm. so that we don't overextend ourselves either, right. just because we're looking to connect with someone, right? For that connection. Um, and then I think the last thing I'll say here again is. Um, find uh, spiritual support in people who also want what's good for you. I think that's so important. Um, I always talk to people about having like spiritual mentors, people mm-hmm. who could pray for you, people who they could talk to you about life. And that helps to frame your mindset so that as you go forward in your own circumstances, you are better able to manage your expectations and your relationships through their input. Yep. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 to 10 says, mm. two are better than one yep. because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them mm-hmm. up. God, I think, created us to crave love and community mm-hmm. with like people. Um, and I'll always be a huge supporter of that. But that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you guys so <laughs> much for listening. Always, always. Thank you guys so much for listening. As usual, you can catch us here on Word SBC 88.3 FM on Tuesdays from 6 to 6.30. And we have reruns fr- on Wednesdays and Fridays from 3.30 to 4. We're also on YouTube at South Bahamas Conference where you can watch our videos and you can catch some reels and highlights of our show on SBC Media Network Mm -hmm. on Instagram and Facebook. That's all for this evening. I'm Tyler. And I'm Pastor Nasa. And we'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Young and Trending was brought to you by the Bahamas Adventist Book and Nutrition Center, located on Tonic Williams Darling Highway.